Mobile One. Well, on just about every fuel pump that I've ever done, either a paper in the box or the box itself says that you've got to drain and clean the fuel tank. Whenever you have a fuel pump go bad, it either there's crud in the tank that caused it to go bad or it goes bad and crud comes off of it or a bunch gets stuck on that strainer on the bottom and then when the pressure is gone, you know, it settles to the bottom of the tank. So you got to clean that out. Anyone here that's uh, ever replaced a fuel pump and not done that, raise your hand. <laughs> I'm so ashamed I must hide. <laughs> it's getting us wearing camo today anyway. But the point is, the, this video, the, there's a shortcut way of doing that to where you don't have to completely drain it, but you don't have to just leave it and ignore the stuff that's in it. So when you think about it, a wet dry shop vac should be perfect for cleaning out a fuel tank, right? Or just sucking the stuff out because it can do wet or dry. But there's two things that are not great about that. Uh, number one, this should be clear so you can see what's coming out of it, and that would be nice. But then when you, you see, everybody sees I'm looking at the warning label, it says to avoid the risk of fire or electric shock. Um, when you look at it here, it says do not use to pick up flammable combustible liquids such as gasoline or use in areas. You imagine it's an electric thing and there's static electricity and all that kind of stuff, right? So it's a possibility that it could ignite. But I found something that works great for sucking it out without having to use a wet dry vac. Let me show you. So the solution is this little device. It's a metal tank that handles the suction. It's got a little hose thing that shows you how much is in it. If I tip it, you can see the oil appear and disappear. Um, problem with doing gas, you got to empty it quick or else this thing starts to grow on you. That's supposed to be straight up and down. You can see that it's not. You've got all of these different clear tubes so you can see what you're sucking through and how much and all that kind of deal. And then it's got a 90 degree, like a little ball valve on the end of it, and a chuck that interfaces with all of these different hoses. It's wonderful. So this, if it's got a little charge in it, I think it's empty at the moment. See it sucks down. And then you can close it back off. So the nice thing about this is you can stick that down into the fuel tank, you know, like on a big sending unit hole where you can see all this stuff down there. I have a flashlight in one hand and I've got this in the other. And if I had a third hand, a gripping hand, if you've read that book, then you can use this and suck stuff out. So see, so you see stuff on the bottom of the tank. You just take one of your little things. And I've got a little drain to the bottom. But you just take that and just hold this, open the valve, and suck up. Say this is just junk at the bottom of the tank. That's what we're doing. We're role playing here. We're using our imaginations. I think I have some footage of this. I'll see if I can find it. So there's a Wacker compactor that you can rent from Ace Rents, and that's what I did for the foundation of my building. And you get all everything sorted out, and then the ground doesn't absorb water the same. It basically hardens and firms it up so that you don't have stuff sinking in mud every time it rains. If you can pack the gravel, it holds and locks together, and it's so smooth and nice to drive on. So anyway, my buddy's got one of those that you sit and ride on. It's old school, so it's not a diesel one with the remote control and the little like I have. It's got like a little globe, half globe, half dome thing. The new ones do, but his is just an old school one that you ride on top. When I borrowed it, he's like, I know you're a mechanic. Uh, if you could diagnose this for me, it tends to cut out a little bit. And when I do start it up, it revs up and then down and then up and then down. And so I'm thinking vacuum leak, fuel restriction, all this kind of stuff. But you don't know until you do something about it. So let's probe the tank on that and show you this guy in action diagnosing something with style. Now to the action. Let's see this thing do its work. So this is an old roller uh, ride-on compactor that vibrates stuff down. Uh, tank's a little rusty. You can feel it in the bottom. We've got a suction tank if you have air compressor. If you don't have one of these, you should get one. Uh, fuel's brand new. Just put it in. What color does it come out? Brown and chunky. It looks like some kind of M and a... <laughs> not it. You know what I'm talking about. It looks like crap. Anyway, I'm just stabbing around and what feels like a quarter inch of rust on the bottom of this tank. This actually died, it quit running because it blocked the fuel filter off. Had to pull the fuel line off and back flush some of that garbage out of there. So then you pull it up a little higher. 
You see all that rust in there? I can't even get it to go up the tube, let alone through the fuel line. As long as I operated this on the flat, it was fine. As soon as I got on a curve, all that rust spilled out into the bottom of the tank and plugged it up, and that's what was causing the up and down idle. It would plug and free and plug and free, and it would die and stall, but it was just a bunch of rust in the tank. Perfect tool to diagnose that. So as I'm cleaning out this tank, I can tell you right now that there's little pieces of glitter, but they don't show up on camera. I've got some little pieces of copper that I'm going to drop in there little pieces of wire. Those should show up on camera okay. So I just get this right down on the bottom there. I hit suck and it just sucks them up just like that. And then I clear it and you hear it suck and clear all the way. Uh, but that's all it takes to get it cleared out. Uh, but you just suck all the contaminants and stuff out and turn it off. And that way you don't have to suck down the whole tank and you still get the main things that you need to get out of there, the big chunky junk, out. So isn't that cool? So next up I'm going to show you how to charge it. The unfortunate thing of this is that you have to charge it with your air compressor and it actually takes a lot. This is a baffle that kind of makes it quiet I guess. These things have an exhaust about them. But you just take your chuck, it doesn't matter what kind of fitting it takes, this is universal. And you just stick this on like this. So it's blowing out of this. You can see the debris on the floor blowing around, spiderwebs and bunny curves. So it's just blowing here, and you see the needle is starting to rise here. So you want to make sure that when you're charging it, you've got this turned off. But it's pretty stinking simple. So that's good enough for our purposes to show you know how it's charged and then as you saw me equalize this and get pressure totally the same on inside inside the tank and outside of the tank you pull this and watch the uh, valve <laughs> see watch a needle goes down pretty fast when it's a big hole like that but I'm gonna suck it onto my finger and that's just all there is to it Easy peasy. So like I say, you've got all of these different things. <laughs> you've got ones that are really skinny like this. It'll fit down a dipstick tube. So if you can't find the drain plug, you can still suck all the oil out. That's why they call it an oil extractor. Um, I use it for gasoline too. Just got to make sure that you clean it up good because gasoline's a short chain solvent and it can mess with the hoses. And these I'm sure you can fix or replace. I'm not sure if these are vinyl or nylon or what they are. But what a handy thing to have around. It's good for sucking stuff out of differentials and whatnot as well. But it is a little bit of a pig when it comes to the air supply. So having a good compressor makes a big difference. So as demonstrated, it works great. But then how do you get the oil from here out and the gasoline out so it doesn't do damage to it? I'm glad you asked. You equalize it again. And the reason why is even if you have just a little bit of vacuum it's really hard to take the cap off it locks down I mean you can do it but it's gonna leave a mark in your finger and your thumb in the process so you take this suck air just leave it open for a little bit and then continue to leave it open so that there's a vent to it and then when you go to take this off and you don't have to tighten this down very much when you do put it on because the suction is gonna suck it down anyway That'll come off. Uh, you take this little guy, and you got to pour this out. So naturally, if you're pouring it out, and this is tipping with it, it's going to pour itself out too. So stick that to the side, and then it's got wheels on it. And you can either take it to your oil recycler and then pour it in their tank if you like, or you can put it in your storage tank or jug or whatever you're going to do. The first thing I'm going to do, I've got a funnel in it. I aim the funnel so that it's favorable. I hang this around here so it doesn't get in the mix. You just tip it like this and pour it out. So what kind of container am I using? I'm glad you asked, that's a good question. This is actually a Kodak, you know like the film? It's a Kodak container for some kind of activator or toner or something guy who is a service guy, he worked on copy machines and he gets these that are extra. He's like, you want one? I'm like, 
Uh, sure, try one. Tried it out, loved it. So easy to pour into, so easy to pour out of without making a mess. It's clean, it's great to work with. And so I asked him for two more and he gave them to me. Now he's an engineer and doesn't do that anymore, so I'm cut off. I don't have access anymore. But man, are these great containers. So if you know a guy that works on copy machines, see if he can get you one of these toner or activator or whatever it was, jugs. They're five gallons. You can see through them. They're kind of opaque. Mine are getting really yellow and hard to see through, but they are awesome. Thanks for watching my floating head video. <laughs> this is the camouflage works like that. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to click subscribe and click the bell. Thanks so much for being here. Bonus footage at the end. Ever wonder what the bonus footage at the end and the Brian's Mobile One guy looks like? That's him. His name's Vince. Thanks, Vince.